Good morning. Oh. Yes. So uh, you've got two of us this morning, and it's going to be a fun webinar today. We're going to talk about things such as um, how do we improve the maintainability of our apps and make them easy to use. And we're going to get a chance to talk about um, things like performance and improving the way your apps perform. So I welcome everybody today. And I want you to know that I have a special guest today. And this is uh, Medai from our Power Apps team. He is an awesome uh, person to get to know. And I'm, I'm going to just stop for a second and just hold on one second. I'm going to pause this because I'm not seeing YouTube kick in. I'm going to make sure you guys kick in, all right? Give me one minute. Okay, I can it now. So everybody seems to be able to see. Thank you for that little pause. Um, you'll notice I have uh, Mehdi on my right here. Let me just tell you a little bit about him before we get started. Um, Mehdi has been working with the Power Apps team and I've enjoyed um, having him as a mentor since I've been on the team. He has over 18 years in technology, including his education as well and he's seasoned in many areas. So he does customer advocacy. He's a, a real expert at business process design. So he's comfortable across all of the business application platform, whether it be Power BI, Power Apps, Flow, and Dynamics. He's also a developer and very, very seasoned in solution architecture. So just having all those skills in one person is pretty amazing to me. Mehdi is also very passionate about the business application platform and consistently, and I just have to stress this, he just takes his time and he goes above and beyond to help as many people as possible build those apps that mean business. So I've put a link underneath his picture here um, where you can go and directly see all of the blogs he's written. I do recommend his blogs. He goes into um, detail, but it's very simple to follow and you can learn a lot of nifty tricks. And so I can't tell you how much I attribute my Power Apps knowledge to Mehdi. Um, you can see a sample of one of his internal apps here where he shows off uh, an app he did internally to help us um, in the World Cup this, this past year. So he just does a lot of neat things. Uh, our leadership respects his talent and I thought you might enjoy kind of picking his brain today. So as he goes over these tips, don't hesitate to uh, chat your questions in the chat. I'll be watching um, and, you know, kind of like make this a conversation wherever we can. All right. So, Mehdi, I'm going to turn it over to you so that you can uh, show us with your stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. Uh, very nice uh, introduction. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to uh, do my first actually webinar with you today. So that's good. It's always a good, uh, good to start. Uh, yeah, so today we'll talk about some of the, so uh, basically uh, I think one thing that uh, Audrey talked about is uh, me being part of the customer success team. So I have, a, I'm lucky in a way because I see, I get to see a lot of apps uh, built from all over the world and different styles and a lot, definitely a lot of learning and great things I learned I actually just by actually seeing what the creativity from people and what they do. Uh, sometimes I see apps that, uh, that uh, you know, can be further optimized and it's always a chance to see how we can kind of, uh, uh, you know, with Power Apps, with the, you know, with the tools we have at hand, how do we kind of, uh, how do we improve the, the, the readability? I mean, I, I, as, as Audrey mentioned, I'm from a developer background, so all of the things that we do from encapsulation, you know, separation of concerns, things that you, you do as a developer to keep your code clean. Uh, there are, you know, the equivalents that you could do within Power Apps Word that that it might that can make your life easier. So, so anyway, so my background again is uh, is um, my current role. Again, uh, I get to see all of those uh, of those apps, and today I'm going to share some of those tips and uh, some of the things that I learned as I was doing uh, this thing. So, 
going to share my screen. Uh, let me know, Audrey, when you see it. And I will go through the presentation. OK, I see it. I think you're good. OK, cool. So uh, in order to kind of frame a little bit some of the tips I'm talking about, I'm, uh, I'm going to show these two apps in action. Uh, the first app here on the on the left, I guess on the right, uh, is, uh, is a news feed app. Uh, and the requirement for this app was that uh, you see cards, uh, uh, basically information about your company, uh, news articles, but you also get some actionable I items like, you know, take some time off or uh, things where you get to approve, reject the car or uh, time off for your employees. So this is kind of the requirement we had at hand when we started this project. Uh, and as you can see here, you know, any card can have any number of actions and also within uh, within uh, within those actions, you might have different styles for those buttons that, that you you you, uh, you click on. Uh, every uh, so the type of actions you might have in this card uh, is things like go and look at the different. Uh, if it's a news item, you might go to a detail view. If it's uh, if it's uh, if it's something about approving or rejecting, maybe it's an API call. So uh, there is a bunch of uh, logical if and else statement that one has to do. So we'll show really quickly how how we uh, how we can implement that in such a way that keeps our code uh, pretty small, uh, pretty neat. Uh, on, the, on, on this side of the equation, I'm going to show uh, how we do searching and filtering the typical way uh, within Power Apps, uh, but also an alternative that can also help uh, with, uh, uh, with your code uh, uh, compactness, I guess. I just want to interject one thing, Mehdi. The, the beautiful app on the right there where you see company news that um, Mehdi made, you can make one very similar if you check out our company pulse template which has a way to put, put together a way to connect your SharePoint news directly to the app. So if you have SharePoint news feeds, you can put them into your app. Try out the company pulse template if you'd like to have something like the app that Medi has built. Thanks, Medi, for letting me throw that in there. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, just to jump in, so what you would, what we're trying to avoid, and typically what happens in, in a scenario like that is something where you have a lot of branches, if as statements where, in this particular case, uh, imagine that our news card, our feed that comes the, and feed this data, like that has titles and has like uh, the source of the news. Uh, so that feed can actually be used to not only drive the content, but also some of these actions that you see in a card. Uh, so, in this particular example, you can imagine that part of that feed, you get also kind of a little bit of a description of what this card is all about or what are the actions that that card uh, is, uh, is actually having you do when you click on a button. So, again, uh, you see here that uh, we get some, uh, this is very, uh, again, uh, it's really up to you to describe how you want to feed content to your, to, your app, to your app, but in this particular case, I have some keywords like uh, navigate or go to a detail screen or, um, you know, like this is, for example, the name of the action, but this is an argument of the action. I want to navigate to a detail screen when I click on a button. I want to go to a time away screen that this is maybe in a case of uh, you want to check vacation card. Uh, there's a vacation card. You want to check your vacation. You go to a particular uh, screen within the app. And you have like another one that might be another card that takes you to Kudo. So there might be a X number, a, a very large number of uh, possibilities actually with these cards. So as you can imagine, this line of if and else uh, would keep growing and growing and growing. So how do you, how, what's an alternative that, that's a, that could be an acceptable alternative is, is first of all, to, to maybe realize that switch can lead to a cleaner code, a uh, cleaner way of actually uh, uh, describing your your cases, uh, so you typically trying that it could be could lead to a little bit more compact code and not something that gets nested like this. Uh, but then the biggest trick here that I usually use for many uh, examples, and I'm going to show two examples here, is really the navigate. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so sorry, the the lookup table. So creating a lookup table in order to avoid that if as statement. So I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna switch to. Uh, to one of my windows here, so um, and I'm gonna click right on this button. So typically, again, we would have seen something like this. Uh, I would have had a feed 
uh, that described a little bit what my action is and really what we're gonna try to do is just go to a state where we, we at least compact a bunch of those uh, if uh, statement into one line. And the easy way to do this is kind of create a lookup table. Uh, and the lookup table really gives you the name and it's usually a key a pair, a value pair uh, uh, where you have a key, in this case is a name, and then you have like kind of the, the value that you want. So uh, one cool thing about Power Apps is that uh, screens can, have, you can grab screens by reference. So I have something called detail screen here. I have a time away screen and I have a CUDO screen. So by, by constructing a collection like this, I can then go and simply in my if, uh, instead of doing the if statement here, I can just do a lookup on my screen. I grab the argument that can be detail screen, time away screen or CUDO screen. And then from there, I, I I decide what kind of screen I want to grab from my lookup table. So this will evaluate in this particular case, let's say the, the action was uh, time away. Uh, this is what the, my API brought me in my argument. I'm going to go to my collection here, do a lookup on it, figure out that actually the screen I need uh, is the detail view screen. So anyway, that's a, that's a quick uh, quick strategy. Usually, to collapse a lot those if else statements, you should realize that doing a constructing a lookup table will help in that matter. So another example of that, going back to my uh, to my uh, to my slides here, is the uh, lookup collection, uh, the style uh, that you might want to define for your uh, for your app. Uh, so you notice in my card view here, uh, I have different style for my buttons. Again, all of this information is coming from my feed. Uh, so, uh, so I have a style collection here that, that describe really all of the colors that I want. So I define that uh, again on my own visible. I have a style collection. Actually, let me go back to this view. Uh, and then go to the fill color or the uh, or even the color of the of the buttons and you can see here that i'm actually just doing a lookup uh, for my particular style that i'm looking for again the name itself uh, the style is coming from my feed information so not only i have titles but also that feed contain all of the metadata that that will drive the actions and the style of my button so if we were to look at the feed uh, a response here uh, that's coming from my, our uh, our CDS call uh, in this particular example or SharePoint call. You will see that I included a column called style, and I defined that style here as the hyperlink style. So because of that API is bringing that, I go back to my uh, collection of uh, of styles. I look up the hyperlink style or the link style, and then I grab the fill or the color item for that. Again, all it, this is doing is avoiding that, uh, that long if a statement because, again, I might have different actions. I would have had to do the alternative here would have been something like if, you know, style is equal to hyperlink, you know, RGBA would be this. Or if uh, else, if it is uh, 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 an approved action, you would have, me, you know, you, else you would have, go grab the RGBA call. So easily this line. Is one single line could have if we haven't done this uh, dictionary here, would have been a very long uh, if else statement. So my point is that if there are opportunities to kind of reduce that uh, by using the lookup strategy uh, on a dictionary, then then it it's worth defining your your dictionary first because again it doesn't have to be an inline collection. You could bring this style sheet from SharePoint or or whatever you you have. Okay, next is uh, uh, search and filtering. Audrey, you're still on the line, right? Uh, 